refreshing their original route back down the town. Uh, of course we'll be meeting with the other districts in the county and we'll be heading the parade towards the demonstration field. But there will be a, a pause now to lay the wreath at the War Memorial. We can see Brother Norman Hood, the County Grand Master. And Brother Hood, now accompanied by Brother Kelly, making their way forward to lay the wreath at the Town's War Memorial. Wreath-laying ceremony is, of course, a feature of almost every Orange Parade on the 12th of July. And in this 50th anniversary of the D-Day landings, they have an added and poignant significance. makes its way through the traditional arch. Brother Hutchinson just passing out of view there, a young man with a lot of responsibility as the District Secretary of Rich Hill, having to see to the arrangements for the 12th, and this in fact his first year in office. their way through the traditional arch in order to head the brethren of County Armagh to the demonstration field. You can perhaps reflect on the symbolism of both the 12th of July and the Orange Order, which is of course approaching its bicentenary uh, to be celebrated next year. rather strange that those who would oppose Orangism tend on the one hand to claim that it has had tremendous malign influence on the course of history and politics in Ireland or Northern Ireland and at the same time to play down the significance of a tremendous cultural event. well ask, does the 12th of July lend any credence to the, the growing theory that there are in fact two nations in Ireland, something which Irish nationalists are anxious to refute, but struggle to actually justify their refutation. Obviously, if it can be claimed that Protestant community and in fact border on the status of a nation that alters the entire uh, conflict situation within Northern Ireland. It alters greatly the perception which many people across the world would have of uh, the Ulster Protestant and his claims to his identity and to his membership of the British family of nations.
I mean, as the banners and collarettes of Rich Hill District passes, you can of course see a variety of symbols mixing religion, history and politics, the basis of any national identity. Here we have the banner again of LOL 665, a banner which, as with many banners across the province, bears the portrait of a deceased brother who, by his service to the institution and to perhaps the particular lodge or district, uh, earned the respect uh, of his brethren. Now the members of LOL 665 and the True Blues Band from Armagh pause while the Armagh True Blues Band lays a wreath on the War Memorial. The bands themselves, of course, a very significant part of the Ulster people's culture. Uh, the Ulster people have a great tradition of marching bands and this in itself points to a distinct uh, identity. It's something almost unique to the Protestant community here in Ulster. The flute band, of course, the most dominant type of band within the processions. And brethren just passing now through the traditional arch arches of course themselves were features of celebration as far back as the 17th century. Triumphal arches were erected at the time of the Battle of the Boyne.